welcome back to our channel. So today's case is the Whitney Houston case. I find this case very, very interesting. Um, also, I'm aware this case has been concluded, we know what happened in it, but I do think it would be very, very interesting to see what the spirit box comes up with. After this case, I do plan on doing the Bobby Christina Brown case as well, just to tie it all in together. But you can comment below after this case, let me know if you've enjoyed it and let me know if you'd like to see more of this. Thank you again for joining. Remember, like, comment and subscribe. It really helps our channel. Again, thank you for all the support. We are on Christy Readings on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat and Christy Readings one over on TikTok. Let's get started to the Whitney Houston case. Whitney Elizabeth Houston was born on the 9th of August 1963. She was born to John Russell Houston, who was an army serviceman, and Emily Drinkert Houston, who was known as Sissy. Now, she was a gospel singer. She did have an older brother, Michael, who was a songwriter, but she also had a half-brother, Gary Garland. Um, he was a basketball player as well as a singer, so music ran in the Houston family, um, even at that point. On Whitney's mum's side, Sissy, she had Dion Warwick, was her first cousin, Dee Dee Warwick as well, and her aunt was Aretha Franklin, an unofficial aunt. Now, Whitney had met Aretha Franklin when she was about seven or eight, and they grew close since then, so again, they were like family as well. So again, the whole networking of the music industry was always around Whitney Houston. In 1987, a rep for Arista Records, Jerry Griffiths, had actually seen Whitney and her mum performing and he went back to them, said he was very interested, showed them the performance and they actually offered her a worldwide record deal at that point. So that must show you how amazing even back then she was. Um, the fact that a rep had walked into a nightclub and they'd scouted her from there and she was given a worldwide record deal at that point. So again... As we all know, her voice was strong. She was a fabulous singer. Um, I think she probably the X Factor from a very, very young age. Um, so again, she got this record deal. Throughout the 80s, she was romantically connected to Jermaine Jackson, the American footballer. She was also connected to Randall Cunningham, an actor, and also Eddie Murphy, which I didn't realise with Eddie Murphy. I find that quite interesting. She then met Bobby Brown in 1989 um, at the Salt Trade Music Awards. After dating for three years, in 18th of July 1992, Whitney and Bobby were married. Now, it wasn't long before trouble followed. Bobby had been in touch with the law, drink driving, possession, um, including jail time as well. Now, on the 4th of March 1993, Whitney gave birth to Bobby Christina Brown. Now, it was their only child, but the sad reality of this is when I looked at the story, Whitney actually had a miscarriage, um, one before and one after as well. And they said that the second miscarriage was more down to the fact that the stress that was on her body. So again, when Bobby Christina came along, this was everything to Whitney Houston because she'd suffered this loss just before as well, as well as things going on between Bobby Brown along the legal side and the law side as well. Nineteen ninety four was a busy year for Whitney. Also, in that year was the year the Bodyguard came out. Now that also gave her a number one hit, "I Will Always Love You," which was originally written by Dolly Parton in nineteen seventy four. Now she also won a Grammy for that for the single in nineteen ninety four. So at this point, she had a lot going on between having her baby, just being married, Bobby having things to do with the law, um, and again she was still trying to do all these tours. She was doing a global tour between 93 and 94. Now, that would have took us up to the time that when the baby was born as well, but she was doing this global tour for the bodyguard at the time. Oh, this is so nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Listen, I got a lot of folks to thank, so I'm going to put this down for a second. Okay. Dolly, of course, coming from you, this is truly an honour. You... Wrote a beautiful song. Thank you so also much. Also in 94, she performed at the state dinner 
of the White House in honour of Nelson Mandela. She also did three concerts in South Africa to honour Nelson Mandela. So again, she had a lot going on at this point. It was also confirmed in 1996 that Whitney had suffered her second miscarriage at this point. Now, again, if you look at everything that was leading up to that from 94 to 96, she had a lot of stress on herself. Um, and I think that was one of the biggest heartbreaks for Whitney Houston looking in at the story um, was the fact that she'd had these both losses. And especially with the second loss, she was still working at the time as this loss was taking place. Between 98 and 2000, Whitney had done a lot of different films and she was doing the soundtracks to these films. But finally in 2000, she brought out her own album. Now, I'm sure a lot of people in my generation will remember this, but My Love Is Your Love. Um, that was brought out in the 2000. But in 1999, she had started a tour for the Your Love Is My Love. 70 dates, the European part went well, but she then cancelled a string of dates due to throat problems. Now, at this point, it was put out by a spokesman that it was throat problems. There was nothing untoward at that point. I don't think, by looking back in the story, that people knew what was going on, what we now know um, at this time. But obviously, she cancelled a lot of these shows down to the fact that she had said it was throat problems. In the 80s and 90s, Whitney had the good girl image. Everything was great. She would turn up to her performances on time. But by 1999 going into 2000, things changed quite rapidly for Whitney. She wasn't turning up to interviews. When she was, it was erratic behaviour. Or she would just leave the interview or just not turn up at all and be non-contactable. The same in photo shoots. They said that her behaviour was very erratic at that point as well. Um, she was questioned over her weight loss and any sort of drug use. And at that point, she denied it. Said there was nothing going on at that point, but she had lost a lot of weight. And you will see further on in this video, she does an interview with Diane Sawyer. I will pop the interview up. I don't agree with Diane, Diane Sawyer's comments. But we've got to remember it was a different generation back there. Things were more acceptable. She questioned her about her weight um, and really, really questioned her on it where nowadays we would never get away with questioning some sort of body image like that. But I'll pop the interview up and let you see for yourself. That, you know, no other women were around. And da, 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 blah, 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 blah. This is my first love. Remember, I had never really ever been in love with anybody like I was in love with Bobby, so. But there were rumours that the loyal wife was concealing a secret violence in the home. Has he ever hit you? No, he's never hit me, no. I hit him. In anger. Wait a minute, Projects. come over here, come over here. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this, you have to come over here. <laughs> have you ever hit her? Have, no, 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 no. I don't, I, I wouldn't. What is hitting me? Never. Um, I have four sisters, four aunts, a mother, you know, two daughters. I would never raise my hands in in any kind of way to them. Um, I love I, I love the beauty of women, um, and this is mine. During Whitney's teens, she met a lady called Robin Crawford. Now she described her as a sister that she'd never had. Bearing in mind, Whitney came from a family of two boys and herself. Robin was Whitney's best friend, a roommate, and executive assistant. Um, for a lot of years. Now, it was rumoured at one point that they'd had some sort of relationship or some sort of intimate inter interaction, um, but it was denied by Whitney Houston. Um, but at a later date, Robin Crawford came back out to say that it had happened, but Whitney was worried what other people think. The reason I'm bringing this into the video is psychically I get that it did happen. Psychically, I get that there was some sort of relationship with this person, Robin Crawford. It was a childhood friend, but I do feel it was Whitney's confidant. Um, years later, I think there was a separation. Um, it will be a wee bit later in the video, but Robin did leave um, from the job that she did with Whitney. On the 11th of January, Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston were travelling to Hawaii. When they arrived there, security found that they were carrying marijuana in Whitney's bag. Now she got away before authorities got to her and charges were later dropped. But two months later, she was due to appear on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Clive Davis and she was just a no-show. Um, so at this point, the behaviour was becoming very scatty. Um, the fact she'd already been caught with drugs at the airport as well, her image had went from being the good girl image to very, very, at this point, especially the fact she had her album and everything out, the bodyguard, Liam Neeson, all these people were trying to help her at this point, but at this point she was still in denial. 
about the drug use and what it was doing to her in her life and what it was doing to her partner. I could get psychically that she was absolutely besotted by Bobby Brown. And again, I suppose an outsider looking in could think, well, well, why? Why would you risk your full career, such a great, successful career for someone like that, when in reality, love is blind, it's true what they say. Um, she was also due to perform at the Academy Awards and she was sacked by her long-term friend. So this speaks a lot. Um, Bart Bacharach, her publicist said the problem was the later revealed she was just, like, her mind was elsewhere. She was all over the place. So again, it was erratic behaviour. She would sometimes go to performances or rehearsals and demand to sing a specific song when she knew fine well that's not what they needed. So she was just being very rebellious with her behaviour and it was getting to the point people were not wanting to work with her. Our, the long-term friend Robin, who we spoke about earlier in May 2000, she left Whitney's company. She did reveal that the mum had tried to stage an, inter- an intervention. Now Sissy had tried to intervene a few times with Whitney, but again to no prevail. Becoming more and more defiant, but again not listening to her family or her friends. She was losing the people in round about her. Um, at the same time, the record labels were worried at how this was going to play out as well. She'd been given all these multi-million pound deals. And again, the, all these deals were given before anything came out about erratic behaviour or drug use or anything like that. Um, in 2001, she signed one of her biggest record deals in music history with Arista and BMG. Now, she renewed it for £100 million to release six new albums. My theory on that is that the record company were putting more pressure on her purposely in the hope that if they put extra pressure on her, especially around the financial side, that she'd maybe start turning up. I don't feel they thought she was worth £100 million. I think it was more to get her to commit to some sort of record deal because, again, as much as she had all that going on in her life, she was a fabulous singer, she was a fabulous entertainer and performer. Um, her mum had worked so hard with her over the years as well. So it must have been a massive let down to that full family that did appear on the 30th anniversary for Michael Jackson. Um, but she did appear at that point very frail. And more rumours were starting to spin at that point as well. The spokesman had came out and said the weight loss was just down to family issues and worries that were causing it. But I'm going to let you see this again interview now by Diane Sawyer. Again, the comments are... I think they're a generational thing. I think years ago you'd have got away with saying things like that, but it, I would say it's a very distasteful interview um, in the generation that we live in right now. And In advance, it is a bit of a trigger warning. It might cause offence, um, but again, like yourselves, I'm very well aware. Watching this. Yeah. It's going to be staring at you physically. Yeah. And they're going to be saying, how thin is she now? Yeah. How, you know, how many bones can we see? Is she sick? And how sick is she? I am not sick, Diane. I am not sick. Let's get that straight. I am not sick, okay? I've always been a thin girl. I'm not going to be fat ever. Let's get that straight. Whitney is not going to be fat ever, okay? The Michael Jackson VH1 appearance. I'm going to show you the picture. Well, that's a bad shot. Well... It may be a bad shot, but this is real. I mean, the, the, the bones, that's real. Yeah, my bones, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm five, seven, and thin. I can understand what you mean. But that's not just thin. No, what is it? Diane, tell me. Do you know? It's scary thin. I can believe what you, what you feel. I can believe that. But do you really know? Did you really know? No, you know. Thank you. Anorexia? No way. They've written it? No way. Bulimia? No way. That it's because of drugs? No. Mm-mm. Now, I grant you, I partied. But there have been times when I know I was going through a lot of emotional stress. Now, just to cast back a bit, when Whitney's career started, her dad actually started a company, um, the John Houston Enterprise. And again, it was just to obviously set Whitney up and things like that, but it was actually Kevin Skinner that ran the company for him. Now, he tried to claim 100 million off the Houstons, basically saying they'd been missold, it was unpaid compensation for help and things like that. This court case went on for quite a wee while, but it was then deemed back in February 2005 that Kevin Skinner got absolutely nothing because he didn't actually own the company, it was actually John Houston that owned the company. 
Um, so again, she had this legal battle going on in the background as well, especially with someone that's meant to be helping you that works within your company. So again, alongside everything else, this was going on. And again, it was affecting her family. 2002, life. Whitney brought out her next album, Just Whitney. Um, now, it was Bobby Brown was the producer on that album. Missy Elliott also performed in that album. That album did go platinum in the USA. But in December 2003, Bobby Brown was charged with battery following an altercation with Whitney where there were visible injuries on her face. Um, now, in 2004, she spent most of her time in Asia, Europe, Middle East and Russia touring. But again, her behaviour was erratic at that point as well. Now, for me, I think the the change in all this to make this even worse than what it was at that point is in 2004, Bobby Brown was asked to do a reality show. Now, originally, Whitney wasn't up for doing that. But as things transpired, now, again, I do get it, it was through Bravo, her man could have spoken into it, but we're all quite guilty for listening to her partner as well. So I feel she'd been talked into doing it in the first place and looking at the story, it kind of says that as well. You know, we love it. Where's your shoes? Just go, just go. I want to get a hot dog over there. All right, stay real. Uh, you always know that. You think I can be any more real than I am? Hands to the knob. Hey, hey. Right, Good. I'm known like the president. They might as well just give me the Oval Office. I'm gonna try me a cheeseburger. You look great. It did here in 2005, and it did not put Whitney in a good light, and um, which probably made things a lot worse for Whitney at that time as well. If he was getting to see inside her life, but also inside the relationship she shared with Bobby Brown, which again. It was that came across a volatile relationship. The best part was the show was bringing in the highest ratings at this point. Um, they were wanting a second season as well. But again, Whitney said no to a second season. Bobby Brown wanted the second season. And in the end, it just never happened. Now, it wasn't until 2009 that Whitney Houston had done her next interview. So that was nearly seven years of a break. And she did it with Oprah Winfrey where she then started to speak about her drug use and the lifestyle that she had been living. Um, I will pop a bit of the interview in, but again, you can't help someone unless they want to be helped. So I feel at this point, the fact she was admitting her problem and saying this is what's going on, that she was ready to address what was going on herself. And again, none of have ever been as famous as Whitney Houston, so we don't know what type of pressure that is um, that she's had on her. But again, in the interview, she was very honest with Oprah Winfrey. And you're sitting right next to that person, and you're not saying a word for a week. You're just sitting there, and you just watch your TV, and you go, ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> That's bad. I can't imagine. Yeah. It was like, Because what, are you just watching TV? You're and, just, yeah. And doing coke? Yeah. Yeah. And Are you smoking? smoking? We uh, smoking. Yeah. No, we were lacing our marijuana with 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 base. With, yeah. With, with yeah. Base. Yeah. 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 It wasn't, we didn't want to crack. We didn't want to crack stuff. We we weren't buying like twenty dollar jumbles. Yeah. We were buying paying money. Yeah. We were buying key like ounces and, and then ounces. We would have our shit. Yeah. You know. For like but a, you were free basing cocaine. Basically. Yeah. 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 And our weed. And and weed. And yeah. We weren't doing weed. a glass. We weren't doing like pipe smoking. Yeah. We didn't get that far. No. You did not. No. Oh, no. In 2009, she released her next album, which was I Look Into You. Now, it was number one. She also appeared on The X Factor, the British X Factor, but apparently she wasn't received well by the media at that point either. Um, I've had a little look to see what's on around that. I can't find too much, but I'll see if I can pop anything into this video. But again, presumptions being stereotypical. The British media, like any other media, I can imagine were just absolute scavengers to a situation like that. In May 2011, she did enter rehab um, for drug use and alcohol. By September, she was performing um, a film, The Hollywood Reporter, performing doing The Hollywood Reporter alongside Jordan Sparks. So by that point, things were starting to get back on par for Whitney. It looks like she was taking a bit of a grip of her life, admitting to her problem. And again, she still had this daughter as well. It'd been a mum, been a pop star, been a wife, and especially everything else had been on around the legal side of things. She did a lot of years of scrutiny. Um, and again, we never know what goes on behind closed doors, and a lot of time we forget that. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, but you don't have to give your opinion. Um, and back then, as you'll see with that Diane Sawyer interview as well, 
the generation was very different. We spoke out very differently and we expected answers at that time and expected people just to admit their problem. And in fact, addiction's an illness. Um, it was Back then, it wasn't classed as an illness the way it is now, whether nowadays there's no shame in having these types of illnesses. It's how you deal with them that makes a difference. Days leading up to Whitney's death, it was say she was quite erratic and dishevelled. Um, on the 9th of February 2012, Whitney visited Brandy Norwood and Monica together with Clyde Davis for the pre-rehearsal for the Grammys. Now, that was her last public appearance um, on the stage and she sang alongside Kelly Price singing Jesus Loves Me. Um, I'll probably be part of that performance up just to let you guys see it. Looking at the performance, looking at herself, um, I don't think you would ever notice there was anything wrong as such. And again, it's a it's a very big reminder to everyone in life. We can all be happy on social media or, or in front of cameras, but it doesn't necessarily feel that's how we are feeling. In a sense, and I do get that we went to Houston again, we've got to remember, 2012, we did not speak about mental health the way we do now. It wasn't acceptable the way it is now. So again, there was a lot of hurdles for Whitney Houston that we all judged, but maybe realise now that it didn't. Oh my God, yeah, found unconscious in the bath in suite 434 at the Beverly Hilton. Now paramedics did try to perform CPR but she was non-responsive and she was pronounced dead at 3.55 that day. Now her funeral was held on the 18th of February. It was an invitation only. The service was scheduled to last two hours but it actually lasted four hours. Um, also Liam Neeson stood up at that funeral and said a few words. Um, Stevie Wonder performed and other artists too. And on March the 21st, the coroner concluded the death was caused by drowning and the effects of heart disease and cocaine use. She was buried next to her father, who had passed away a few years before. Now, her mother is still alive to present this day, which would have been Sissy Houston. Um, again, within this case, I'm going to pop a little bit up about the death in the news report, but I want to be as courteous as possible to the family and to any fans. I don't want to offend well, anyone. The Grammy Award celebration are stunned by her death. Fans and the media started gathering around the hotel as the news spread. Houston was a guest at the hotel. Beverly Hills police say they received a 911 call at 3.43 this afternoon. Our officers arrived on scene in about two minutes. Uh, fortunately, the fire department was already on scene for a pre-Grammy party. So when we got here, the fire department and the hotel security was in her hotel room. Uh, the attempted resuscitation measures. Minutes later, at 3.55, Houston was pronounced dead. Authorities say she was found in a bathtub. She has an entourage with her family. It's nice to put this little bit in before we do the spirit box, in case there's any relevance, but it was the things that went to Houston lights and the things that made her grow in life. She loved swimming and hated being out so much, loved relaxing and chilling and family time. She did like her sleep. She wanted to be a teacher or a vet. Now, she was sincere about helping people, always quite hyper and big-hearted. One of her dearest friends, Monica, said that she was a devoted friend and her friend Cece said the same. She would do anything to help other people. Whitney Houston also believed that success would always come and go. I agree with that. The Grammy meant a great deal to her. Um, she, back in the day, she was called The Voice when she first started coming out. First Grammy appearance was in 1986 where she won six Grammys, so how fabulous for your first Grammy. 
Award, Clive Davis still alive until present, which was one of our managers as well. Again, I'm going to do the spirit box now. I'm going to find it very interesting to see what comes out. We're going to ask it a few questions. What I will do is ask a little bit about her daughter as well. But as I said, that is going to be our next case and it will be on this channel. So remember, like, comment and subscribe because you will get a notification anytime we're uploading anything. Um, but what we'll, this, again, the spirit box can be quite, it can give you a bit of a headache. Um, if you hear anything on the spirit box, please, please comment below and let us know. Because what I do find doing these videos is I might miss a lot of the spirit box. And then when I listen back or you guys write the comments, it all starts to make sense and it actually builds a picture. What I do get with this is Whitney Houston was no different from any of the rest of us. Life was very busy for her, pressures were there and she had an addictive nature. Um, and again, an addictive nature possibly around the relationship as well as drugs and alcohol. I don't believe for a minute Bobby Brown forced her to do any of that. Um, I feel that she was all pro-choice on her own. But I do feel she was very, very obsessed um, with Bobby Brown and uh, maybe an unhealthy love, which we already know anyway. Let's do the spirit box though and we'll see what comes through. Let's get started, all right. As I said, it can be quite noisy. It can give you a little bit of a headache. Don't worry if you can't relate with it, but if you can, feel free to comment below. Let us know what you can hear. Um, what I do find with doing these cases that are good is that because I'm doing it from the same place, by the time we get to the end of the case, it's a bit more familiar and it brings spirit in a little bit quicker as well. The energy's already built up, that's what I'm trying to say. So when we put the spirit box on, I'm confident enough to know that anything that comes through the spirit box will be something to do with this case. Um, I have sat for the last three and a half hours doing this case. So let's hope the energy's stuck for it that way. So let's get started. The first question would be, Whitney, are you with us? Do you have anything to tell us? Is there anything we need to know? Whitney, did you end your life or was it down to misuse? Was there anyone who was responsible for your death? <laughs> Can you tell us your favourite song? Is there anything about Bobby Brown? What can you tell us about Bobby Brown? Is your daughter with you? Where's 
Who was responsible for Bobby Christina Brown's death, Whitney? Will there be justice around this? Who was your favourite singer, Whitney? Is there anyone you would like to give a message to? Are there anything else you would like to say to us? Can you tell us anything about Bobby Brown? Are you happy? give you my conclusion on this guys thank you so much for joining um again pop your comments below if there's, any, there's possibly loads that i never heard that you was heard so it builds a picture yeah i love that that it builds a wee picture so if you are watching this video please go into the comments and have a look as well um a lot of people have listened to the spirit box on many occasions with myself they find it a little bit easier the more you listen um i haven't been using you probably noticed i'm not using my actual big spirit box now i'm pregnant with twins at the moment so I'm being very, very careful. This is the first time I've used the spirit box when I've been pregnant. And it's only because I was very, very curious myself to see what came through with Whitney Houston. What I do get with that case is, um, I feel it was misuse of drugs. I don't feel she went out and set out to end her life. Um, what I do think, though, is that she was in the same cycle for about 12 years. And I don't think she ever truly admitted she needed help. I feel she was always in denial. And I think that's maybe the thing that always held her back. I do get, though, something coming out around her daughter's death, but we'll go into that case, as I said, in the next case. But I do feel something's going to come out and something to do with the coast. I don't know why, but I feel when I heard the coast, there's been something very significant with I that. do get in October time, there's something going to come in around Bobby Brown as well. Um, I was hoping it would come through the spirit box, but again, um, I was quite confident around that. Actually, I do feel like... There, there was definitely a lot of activity on it, put it that way. I do feel the other two men is a connection to do with her, but one might be her dad, but I do feel one man's more to do with the music industry. Now, possibly to do with that man, Clive Davis, because I kept getting the name Clive around something as well. I feel she just went in that bath. It is what it is. She has lost her bearings, maybe fell asleep. Um, but I do believe that she was creating the same cycle every single day. Um, and I want to say that I don't think 
Bobby Brown was anything to do with Whitney's lifestyle. I feel she chose that for herself and I feel she was very strong about that. And I sadly feel that the miscarriages and the losses were something massive to her. She was trying to balance her career as well as her family life. And if she's not had time to grieve for those losses, then again and again that could lead to the PTSD. And back then it was something we never ever spoke about. I grew up listening to Whitney Houston. I loved all her albums, the very first one in particular. Um, if you haven't seen The Bodyguard, go and check it out. A lot of people, when I was reading up in the story, a lot of people were saying her acting wasn't great. The Bodyguard was kind of designed for her. Now, that wasn't the case at all, but when they seen Whitney, they decided that they did want her. But I just think it was a brilliant film. I think that that's where, as we've heard in the story, it showcased her voice, and that's where she was kind of born from. I just think I well, came at the wrong time for her. It's a really, really sad story. As I said, it's not a crime case, but I thought you would enjoy it. And I'm sure there's parts of this case that you've heard today that you probably didn't know, and it might be things that are quite personal, but in the other side of it, every day's a school day. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. We are on Christy Reading's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat and TikTok, as I said. Like, comment and subscribe for our next notification for the Bobby Christina case, which will become the next three weeks or so. Thank you for joining. I hope you all have a fabulous day. Stay safe. Take care. See you soon.